Hi, my name is Ray Pastor, and today I'm going to talk about some rules for developing good PowerPoint presentations. So many presentations we see just aren't done very well, so I'm going to try to show you some really good, simple strategies to help you develop better PowerPoint presentations. If you think about these things when you're developing your presentations, I promise you, your presentations will be much, much better. You won't make your audience go to sleep. They won't be bored and tired. All right, so the first thing you need to do is you need to make sure that you have a message. What is your story? PowerPoint, when you're giving a presentation, you're telling a story. It doesn't matter what the topic is. Even during my research presentations, I am telling a story. Tell the story. Make sure the presentation flows. Look at the titles of each of your screens. Does it flow? Are you telling some kind of story? Goals and objectives. Two to three main talking points that you want to hit on throughout the presentation. Look at famous speeches like, uh, you know, famous keynote speeches from the late Steve Jobs and such. He'll tell the people in the beginning, this is what you're going to learn. He'll tell them when they've learned it and tell them what they're going to learn next. And he'll pick a few points to hit on throughout that whole presentation at the end and he'll tell you exactly what those points were. If you have more than three, you're starting to overload someone's short-term memory. Our working memory just doesn't work like that. We get overloaded really quick. Think of our memory like a glass of water. You can only fill that glass up so high before it starts overflowing. If you have 15 goals, 15 main talking points to talk about today, each person in the audience is probably only going to remember maybe one because you've overloaded them so much they can't even remember three of them. If your audience is very highly motivated, you might be able to get away with four to five of them. But you should stick to three. Three should be your magic number. Organization. State your main points at the end. State your main points at the beginning. When you state a main point, tell them, hey, I just made this main point. Then say, and now we're going to talk about our next main point and tell them what that is. Make sure it's, you have to organize it like that. Text. Use text sparingly. People do not like to see text on the screen. People have a trouble. It actually overloads their working memory when they're trying to read what you have on the screen and hear what you're saying. So use text sparingly. A few words on the screen, maybe one or two or three. You can see my sentences here. I have a, just a few words, couple sentences. Um, do not put a sentence unless it's needed. Do not fill up a screen with text. Make sure users can read this, the text. Don't have weird fonts. Don't have small text, nice large text. Images. Only use images when they need to help your audience understand you making a point. Don't just throw them in there because they look great, they look cool on each screen. You know, I was at this presentation one time and the theme was Soar into the New Year. And there was a different airplane in the top corner of the screen on each slide. I couldn't tell you any content at the presentation. What I could tell you is I was excited just to see what the picture of the airplane was on each slide, which had nothing to do with the content. So do not use images because they look cool or fun. Use them because they're useful. Meaningful images. Do not include too many images on the screen either. No busy backgrounds. Make sure users can read the text. Text and background should be opposite. So you either have a dark background with light text or light background with dark text. If the colors are similar, you might get into a room where the monitor projects the colors as the same. Just because it looks nice on your computer doesn't mean it's going to look nice when you present it. Do not, for example, do not use a blue background with blue text. And now I'm going to show you some examples of bad slides. Look at all the text on the screen. Obviously, I've just written the word bad. I have different fonts, different font sizes. I have paragraphs worth of stuff written. There's no way this slide should ever exist. If you see slides like this, someone did a bad job of designing. Here's a good slide. Point one, point two, point three. One word, three points. Very simple. Compare these two. This slide is the person who's going to sit up there and read you a paragraph. So when you're presenting, do not, do not, do not look at the screen. Talk to your audience. I'm going to develop another presentation about public speaking and actually being the presenter and what not to do, but that's a huge one. Talk to your audience, not the screen. Here's another bad slide. Look at all the images on the screen. You don't need a hundred images on your screen when I could just simply have this. One image is all you need. 
Here's an example of a bad background. Look at these colors. First of all, it's, I mean, a red background is, is it says a lot. You know, that's, that's like uh, getting someone's attention, like emergency or something. But look at this text. This test text, I can see it on my computer, but if I put this up on a monitor, up on a projector, especially in a, light, a room with the lights on, I guarantee you the users could not read that text. Too similar in color. Bad slide. Look at these charts. What are these telling you? Can you re get anything from these? Look at all the numbers thrown everywhere. Look at how much you need to sit there and spend five minutes just figuring out what these charts are trying to tell you because you can't read them. The one on the left, you can't read because there's too many options. The one on the right has all kinds of things going on, different colors, different numbers. I have no idea what's going on there. Simple. When you're creating a PowerPoint slide, it has to be simple. The learners need to be able to understand it in one second, not five minutes. Look at this. Look how simple this is. First year students' computer choices. We have red, green, blue. We see numbers. Very simple. You can understand this chart in one second. Even better, just show one percentage and tell them what it means. What this percentage means is that 99% of PowerPoint presentations you see have something bad in them. So don't be that 90%. The goal of this presentation was so that you can be the 1%, the percent that actually thinks about your presentation and does some things to make it good. Thank you.